Colleges that we've worked with have been pretty good about um, providing for students um, private rooms for testing, extended test times, um, that they, um, like instead of having to write out an essay exam that they could do it on a computer to use spell check and things like that. They can get a peer note taker or what's really popular now is getting um, copies of lecture notes from professors. Some professors will put it right out on their websites. So whether or not you have the accommodation, it's available for everyone in the class. Um, they might be able to get a reader um, for their exam or someone to write for them. Uh, again, there's a lot more than this. These are probably the most common ones that we see that are provided. Um, you, because of the nature of college, you won't see that they're going to get extended deadlines for projects or papers um, or even for tests. It might just be that they're allowed extra time on a test, but don't expect that they're going to be extend that deadline out and let them take it past the date. The other thing is most professors, even if you get accommodations from um, the Disability Services Office, most professors have are you know, they'll work with you, but a lot of them are pretty upfront to say, if you miss a deadline, then it's a zero. Or this is the, I mean, they will tell you on day one what the expectation is. And learning disability or not, that's the way it works in college. We just had that happen this last week <laughs> with a student who missed a paper. <laughs> and so Josh went in and they talked to the professor and he said, point blank, he said, this is what college is. This is what real life is. You know, so you miss the deadline, these are the consequences, you know. And that's hard lessons it, to learn. It, they are hard lessons to learn. They're expensive lessons to learn. <laughs> what, what's the pulse of the colleges right now? Mm -hmm. Are they feeling like, oh, they're finally making adjustments for LD kids? Or are they feeling like, oh, they're just making excuses for these kids? Are they really grasping how really have specific needs? I think it really goes from professor to professor. I think so too. And there's and there's something called Rate My Professor <laughs> um, that's out there that a lot of even disability services said, hey, check out Rate My Professor to see which which professors are, are good professors to have and which might be more understanding to somebody of that. Um, we have some disability services that are very hands-on that say, you know, hey, don't don't take this. Don't, <laughs> right. All right. don't, if don't take, take him. freshman comp, take it from these professors, but not okay. these. Right. If and you're going to take this class, take it from these. And that these. depends on which college is to. Other ones will push to rate my professor. Others are really hands-on. But right. it, but yeah, I think in in most circumstances that we have had with professors and we've had you know kids writing an email saying that you know this is my disability this is what i need i think most professors are like that's totally fine thank you for saying that it's they usually handle it really well is that yeah. something that you would suggest that the child does in each class as well write the professor a note saying this is my disability it, it's up to them and it, it would be on a case-by-case -case basis. The disability services informs the professor about um, not specifics on what disability they have, but these are some things that might be helpful for the student in this class. So there's not really telling them what their disability is. Okay. Um, I mean, you can always say, hey, I, I struggle with these types of things. This is what's helpful for me. I'm registered with disability services. I, 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 haven't had any professors that have really thrown it back in the kids' face for advocating for themselves. And does that really, in fact, happen? The reason why I ask is I'm a retired elementary teacher, and oftentimes we would be three months into the school year before we got the students' records to know that they right. No, I would. We ed. part of Do part of our program is really in, and and this is. For a lot of these kids that are going to struggle, and this is me in, included, that I had, and what was really important for me was to build relationships with these teachers so that I was comfortable that I was going to go and meet with them in office times. I was going to go and do whatever I took to, um, to get through these classes. Mm -hmm. and, and that was a good introduction of kind of who I am, and it's not as personal as doing it face-to-face -face as sending an email. Mm -hmm. um, but for me personally, and what kept me going through school is building those relationships with those professors. And once you found those couple professors, you kind of stuck with them 
and you took their other classes that they that they might teach. And by the end, with me, I was mowing professors' lawns and and doing those types of things. I mean, I was getting to know them, watching cats, yeah. watching houses. Um, I, I mean, you just if you spend enough time with them, they're going to give you the benefit of the doubt if you do miss something or they know that you're taking their class serious and those types of things. And you're showing up every day, mm -hmm. those types of things. I think overall though we found is that if students have been upfront and honest with it, most professors have been, um, have been willing to give them the benefit of the doubt at least once. Um, you know, and we've, we've really encouraged our students like the moment you miss something, y you don't just ignore that. You need to tell the professor right away, sorry I messed up on this, what can I do to improve my grade? Is there a chance I could turn that paper in late even though you said not? And if I can't, what else can I do to better my grade? And the more you communicate to professors that you are invested in this course, probably the more they're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Um, so anyway, so some technology accommodations that you might get. And again, this is something that this is not the college is not going to pro um, provide these, but this is something for you to consider. Kurzweil 3000, we mentioned it briefly, that's a text-to-speech program. Um, you can scan any written document into it and it can read for you. Um, so that might help students who have maybe slow processing speeds. The other thing you can do with it, um, it puts everything in digital format so you can highlight, almost like you're going to highlight in a textbook, but instead you're highlighting on your digital screen. And then you can pull those highlights and you can dump them into something else. So for example, you can say, I'm going to highlight every vocabulary word in this chapter, and now it's going to go into another um, screen for me, and now I have a list of all my vocabulary words that I have to study for, for the test. So, Instead of highlighting in the book and having to transfer that information, I could highlight the main ideas, I could highlight main points, it's vocab words, whatever it is, and I could take that then and put it into a different document form, and now I can study from that. Yeah. So it, it can be a really good study tool as well. A, a lot of the students have <coughs> studying consisted of, I've read the chapters, yeah. or I've done the practice <laughs> right. homework, and that's not, that's, all I've done. that's not good enough in college. Right. I'm going to... Is this something kids are using in high school as well? I'm not familiar with that. Um, some of the students, if they've been at Groves Academy, they've used it. Okay. Um, some students have, but a lot of other schools may not. You, you should ask. Be, but you can ask. A, a text-to-speech program. Kurzweil's pretty slick. I mean, yeah. it, if it shortens your time to make a study guide. Um, shortens your time to read. By like, an, in half. Yeah, it really, and especially when you start to get multiple assignments, bigger assignments, things are moving faster. A lot of our kids are going to those types of strategies just to shorten those processes. Right. The smart pens, um, you can actually get these mm. at, I think, like Target even. I think they range in price, but I think you can even get them for like $100. They come with a specific notebook that has to go with it. Basically, the pen records the lecture as whatever it is that you're at as you write and so if you can't keep up with the keep up taking notes um, you know you you're taking notes and then you have to jump down whatever but when you go back into that notebook and you place your pen on that spot it's going to go back to the lecture and play that part of the lecture again for you so mm -hmm. it's kind of a cool way then for kids to keep up with in a classroom setting mm -hmm. Um, smartphones, cell phone alarms, things like that, just for students to set, uh, uh, I mean, our kids are glued to their cell phones. Um, I don't think they ever leave their cell phones anywhere. <laughs> That's the one thing they manage to always be able to keep. Um, so to teach them to utilize the technology on that, to program in deadlines that are coming up, program in reminders for themselves, as silly as it sounds, even program reminders for them to study. Oh. It just beeped. Oh, I'm supposed to study for my lit exam or whatever. Because those are things that sometimes students end up spacing out, especially over a weekend or whatever. So those are strategies I'd encourage you to start utilizing with your students now if they're not already. So by the time they hit college, this is already something that they're doing routinely. Um, Non-technology accommodations are using um, planners and calendars. Um, some of your students might already be doing this. Um, if they're not, uh, it doesn't have to be on a paper, it could be on the computer, whatever is helpful for them, but some way for them to organize their information to track their schedules. Because when they get to college, you aren't going to be able to remind them that they have a history project that's due on Friday and that they've got a test for psychology next Monday and they have a paper due on whatever. 
it's not going to happen. And even if they're still living in your house, it's hard sometimes to keep up with what, you know, what assignment is due when. Um, so the more that they can get into a routine of keeping their own schedule, the better. Yeah, I know a lot of parents and probably staff in high school are poorly push the planners. But it, when you leave high school and you don't have the, you have the same class every day, now you might have it just Tuesdays and Thursdays or just one day. And that's right. where we just had a conversation with a student. Hey, I, I, 